everyone, my name is Miss Fitzgerald, you can call me Miss Fitz, and today we are going to learn about simple machines for a physical science standard. So our standard today is to design, build, and refine a device within design constraints that has a series of simple machines to transfer energy and or do mechanical work. What that means is I am going to show you some uh, simple objects and we are going to combine those. You're going to show me how we can combine those to create a machine. So for this lesson today, you're going to need a piece of paper and a notebook and or a notebook and a pencil to write with. So let's talk about simple machines. When you think of the word machine, what do you think of? I'll give you a moment to think. When I think of the word machine, I think of something that does a job. Maybe a power tool or construction equipment, uh, something that does some kind of work, right? But in scientific terms, a machine, and that's true, those things are machines, but some things are machines that you may not think are machines. So machine, the scientific definition is any device that changes the magnitude or direction of a force. Okay? A force is anything that is a push or a pull. So if you need to write that down, remember that a force is a push or a pull. What a machine does is it changes the magnitude or how much, how great, or the direction, which way the push or pull goes. Okay, so it's something that makes your work more efficient or easier. There are six different types of simple machines. Now, a lot of tools, a lot of machines that we think of as machines are a combination of these six types of simple machines. So keep in mind that these six types are simple machines. Okay? Um, the first type is a lever. And I'm gonna have you write these down and then we'll go through one by one and I'll explain what they are. The next is a wheel and axle. Then we have a pulley. Um, a plane or an incline plane. A wedge. And a screw. So let's go through these one by one and I'll explain exactly what qualifies as a simple machine. The first is a lever. A lever is a bar that pivots at a fixed point called a fulcrum. So a classic example of a lever would be a seesaw, okay? It has a bar, right? And then the fulcrum or the point where it pivots is right here in the center. And what a lever does is it changes the magnitude and the direction of your force. It does both. So what it does is when you push down on the seesaw, what happens to the other side? Push down this way, what happens over here? It goes up, right? So a lever, let's write here that seesaw is a classic example of a lever. That's how it changes the direction of a force, but how does it change the magnitude of a force? So depending on where the fulcrum is, less force is needed to lift an object on the other side. Um, so a classic example of this would be like a paint can opener. So you're, you're putting that little lip of the paint can opener underneath the paint can, and when you lift up on the other side, then it is creating a greater magnitude of force to open the paint can, right? Okay, next we have a wheel and axle. 
I'm going to leave this up here in case you need some more time to look at that. We'll write something down. So a wheel and an axle consist of two different objects of two different sizes, either circular or cylindrical. One of them is larger than the other. So the wheel is the larger circle and the axle is the smaller circle or cylinder. And what happens is when you turn the wheel, the force that you put into the wheel is magnified or made greater when it's transferred to the axle. Okay, because your, your force is being exerted over a shorter or smaller amount. Okay, so a classic example of wheel and axle is what you find on your car. Anything that has wheels, any kind of cart that rolls or chair, um, but something that you may not think of as a wheel and an axle is like a doorknob on a door. You turn the doorknob, that's the wheel, and then it's connected to another piece inside the door that controls the mechanics of the door. So the force that you exert on the doorknob is transferred to that little piece inside and that creates a greater force on the inside of the door to open the door. Okay, so let's put wheel and axle here, let's put um, doorknob. I'm going to give you a common example of each one. It kind of helps jog your memory when you're trying to think of what kind of machine something is. Next we have a pulley. So a pulley is a wheel that holds a rope or a cable that reduces the force needed to lift an object. So you have something that you want to lift over here you have a wheel and then you have a string over the wheel and that's considered a pulley. So when you pull down on this, it makes it easier to lift your load. So a flagpole would be an example of a pulley. Um, another household example would be your blinds. Your blinds are considered a pulley because when you pull down on that string, if you look inside of the blinds, you'll see the mechanics inside the blinds. There's a little wheel in there. So when you pull down on that string, I have these really heavy wooden blinds and it'd be extremely difficult if I had to lift them myself just using a string, right? So what the wheel does inside the blinds is it makes it easier. It takes some of the load off of you. So when you pull down on the string, it takes some of that pressure of the blinds or that weight off the blinds off of you. So it makes it easier to lift, okay? So pulley is considered a machine. Next, we have an inclined plane. So an inclined plane is any kind of slanted surface that makes raising an object um, easier. So if you think of, if you've ever had to move before, if you've ever used a ramp, it is easier. Think about loading a refrigerator into a moving truck. It's gonna be way easier to load the refrigerator, walk it up a ramp, then it would be to take the refrigerator, lift it off the ground and put it into the truck, right? So what the ramp does is it increases the distance over what you, which you exert your force, but it actually makes your work easier. So you have to go further, but it's easier to do. Okay. Next we have the wedge. And for, I'm sorry, for pulley here, let's put blinds. And for plane here, let's put a ramp. Okay, next we have wedge. And I know you're thinking, Miss Fitzgerald, when are we going to get to build that machine you told us we were going to get to build? I know it's we have to get through all of these first because you don't know what to, you don't know what a machine is composed of if you don't know what all the six types of simple machines are, right? So we have to learn all the simple machines first and then we'll make something and you'll be like, oh, this is this. Just simple things that you look at every day. You won't think of as machines until you learn this. It's pretty cool. So the wedge, it's a pair of two planes that move um, often used for cutting. So when I think of a wedge, I think of anything that is like sharp or pointed at the end, okay? So like a classic example is a knife. 
Don't think of a knife as a machine, but it is. And last but not least, we have a screw. A screw is an inclined plane wrapped around a cylinder used to hold objects together. And you're probably thinking, how is a screw an inclined plane? So think of a bottle cap or like a spiral staircase. So you have this thing going around, this thing's a cylinder, right? And you have this screw going around the inside like a spiral staircase. So that's how it's a plane. It's a plane that's going in a circle, okay? And it's wrapped around the cylinder used to hold objects together. So classic examples would be a bottle cap or just a classic screw, right? Let's put bottle cap here. Okay, so now that you know what the six types of simple machines are, I want you to spend five minutes, um, look somewhere in your house for something that you believe is a simple machine. And when you come back, we'll discuss and we'll see if you are correct. I also want to provide the example of a shovel. So if you're struggling, if you don't know what kind of machine something is, think of a shovel, okay? A shovel is actually a combination of two simple machines. So here we have a wedge because it's pointed at the end, okay? And then this bar right here is a lever. So even though something doesn't look like any of these pictures that I showed you doesn't mean that it's not a machine, right? So think about this. So what this does, it changes the magnitude and the direction of your force, okay? So when you put your foot down on this, if you've ever been outside working in the garden, you know it's almost impossible to dig up weeds or dig a hole with your hands, right? So a shovel makes your work more efficient. When you push down on this, it magnifies your force. So this sharp point of the wedge goes into the dirt and it makes whatever you did, whatever you push down on here, a stronger force. And then when you pull down on the handle, you are pulling this way, right? So you are changing the direction of the force. You're going down and the dirt is going up. So this, this shovel is considered a compound machine because it's a combination of two different simple machines. So a lot of the things that you find around your house might actually be compound machines because they're combined, right? So for the we do portion of this assignment, I'm going to provide some simple materials and we're going to see if we can think of a way to create a machine out of these materials, simple or compound. Okay. So I have here two popsicle sticks, two washers, two paper clips, two nails, and a string. So to accommodate those that might take a little bit longer on this assignment, I might break this into a second lesson so that they can, I could provide them with a document that tells them the materials we have to work with, give them a picture, and give them some time to sit at home, maybe talk with their parents and decide what kind of machines we could make out of these objects. So just off the top of my head, I would say that you could create, you could take the pop, popsicle sticks here, you could put the nail in here and create like a pair of scissors, which is a compound machine. You could even sharpen these edges and create a wedge, okay? Because a wedge is anything that's thicker at the top and skinnier at the bottom. And then when you move it like this, that makes it a lever. A popsicle stick on its own is a lever, right? You could put it on a nail and have a fulcrum here, have a pivot point, or maybe like this. You could use these washers and the nail as a wheel and axle, right? So you could turn this wheel and it would turn the nail. You could use the paper clip and the washers. You could feed these washers through here. You might 
able to create some kind of pulley system with the string. 